Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Dr. Carson, for gracing us with your presence here at the National Religious Broadcast uh, Annual Convention. This is, as you know, a place where we come to refresh as Christian leaders in the country to revive uh, so that we can go out and do the work of the ministry internationally. It umbrellas people in radio, television, print media that are sharing the gospel. I personally, as you know, run Urban Cure, the Center for Urban Renewal and Education in Washington, D.C. So I'm going to ask you questions specific to that work, which is a great work for the country as anti-poverty programs now represent a quarter of the budget, $900 billion a year, $22 trillion in a war on poverty uh, since Lyndon Baines Johnson. So my first question is about research and data overwhelmingly showing the correlation between single parent homes and poverty. According to Ron Haskins of the Brookings Institution, in 2009, the poverty rate for children in homes with married parents was 11%. The poverty rate in homes with children in homes headed by single mothers alone in that same year was 44.3%. Yet giving birth outside of marriage is becoming increasingly a part of our American culture. In 1970, only 7% of American children lived with a mother who had never married. Today, that number is 48% of American children live with a mother who had never married. When Reagan was president in, in 1980, 18% of American babies were born to unwar unmarried mothers. Today, 43% of American babies are born to un married women. So my question is based on a Gallup poll that came out last year. 61% of Americans now said that giving birth outside of marriage is morally acceptable. Do you think that is a problem that more and more Americans, particularly young Americans, think having a child outside of marriage is morally acceptable? And if you think that it's a problem, what would you do as president to restore traditional marriage and return fathers to homes? Uh, yes. Well, many of our adversaries particularly uh, socialists, have said that our faith and our family are the strong pillars of America. And if you want to bring America down, you have to attack those two pillars, faith and family. You know, I look at that uh, situation that occurred because of our government in the 60s when LBJ declared a war on poverty. It's not the government's job. And, uh, you know, $19 trillion later, now it's up to $22 trillion later, we have more poverty, 10 times more people on food stamps, broken homes, out of wedlock births, crime, incarceration. Everything is not only worse, it's much worse. And the, African-American community, 73% of babies are born out of wedlock. And that usually ends that woman's education and sends that child into poverty at a rate four times greater than normal. How do we resolve a problem like that? Well, I've had an opportunity to speak at a lot of uh, public, uh, well, actually, they're privately funded uh, organizations that support women who are pregnant through the pregnancy so that they don't get an abortion. And then other organizations that will provide childcare so that she can go and get her GED, her associate's degree, her bachelor's degree, her master's degree, learn how to take care of herself, and then teach that to her child. That's the way that you break the cycle of poverty. Otherwise, we just continue the same cycle and it continues getting worse. And that is something that is done by we the people. It's done by the private sector because that way you can put people in these centers who can begin to tell that young woman that she is valuable, you know, that Jesus died for her, that she doesn't have to turn herself over to the first guy who comes along and says she has pretty eyes. Because many times when growing up, she never heard that. And she never developed the kind of self-esteem that would allow her uh, to resist uh, that situation that in most cases ends up destroying her life. Thank you, Dr. Carson. And thank you, uh, Star, for that great question. Star, what's on your mind? I'm glad you brought up Planned Parenthood and that that discussion came up last night in the debate on abortion. There have been 60 million plus legal abortions in America in the 43 years since Roe v. Wade became national law. This should give us all great pause. 
Of these abortions, some 40% are on the potential offspring of women of color. This in the African American community is a growing concern that 40, that there's a growing concern in the African American community that 79% of Planned Parenthood's abortion facilities are located in black and Latino communities, increasing the desire to know if Planned Parenthood is specifically targeting minorities to control their birth rates. Considering the founder of Planned Parenthood, Margaret Sanger, spoke often about controlling the birth rates of those she declared human weed, which included, in her words, the Negroes. What would you do as president to address the concern of these black leaders that believe Planned Parenthood is specifically targeting the poor and the vulnerable to lure them into abortion? And knowing what we now know today about fetal development in the womb, do you believe that Roe v. Wade should be totally overturned? Well, you know, I have uh, been a vociferous opponent of Planned Parenthood, specifically because of Margaret Sanger, who was a eugenicist who believed that people like you and I shouldn't exist. So uh, there is absolutely no way I'm going to sanction anything that she's done. Uh, she was, you know, she was... She was an admired figure in Nazi Germany. And, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, when Hillary Clinton comes along and says that, that Margaret Sanger is one of her heroes, boy, that really makes me wonder uh, what kind of person she really is. Um, I believe that parent, Planned Parenthood should be defunded uh, and should be dismantled, as far as I'm concerned, because. You know, this is a culture of life, uh, or at least it should be. And more and more Americans are actually starting to be pro-life as they learn more about what's going on in the uterus. That's been, you know, an advantage of advances in science and in imaging uh, techniques, and I think that's wonderful. But what they did uh, with selling of body parts and dismembering of fetuses, I believe, is criminal activity. And uh, I, we would investigate that very strongly. Because I believe those people should be in prison. And we should be doing everything we can to make sure that we don't encourage that. And in terms of judges who are appointed, um, I would obviously be looking for people who believe in life and not people who believe in death, and the way that you find that out is by looking at their lives. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, last night, the fruit salad of their lives, what I was referring to is Matthew 7.20, which says, by their fruit you will know them. So you look at all the fruit that they have borne. And in the, in, 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 in the New Testament Greek, it implies salad. Of course. Yes. <laughs> By the fruit salad, it's implied in the text, just to exactly. be clear. <laughs> Since other debates don't offer opportunity to get to the real issues confronting American people, I just thought I would ask questions of substance. Social Security. Many political insiders are proposing an increased retirement age in order to, according to them, save the system. But while this might sound good for white collar workers like professors or politicians who may want to die at their desk, the thought of blue collar workers like truck drivers and waitresses working until they're 75 before they qualify for Social Security is a concern for some of us who advocate on behalf of low wage American workers. So my question is this, if you had a choice between raising the Social Security retirement age or allowing younger workers to divert their payroll taxes away from the IRS and toward a personal IRA, which would you choose and why? Well, actually, if you go to bencarson.com, you'll see I advocate both of those things. Um, what you have to recognize is that Social Security is scheduled to go broke in 2033. It's not that long from now. Um, and it's because when we, when we put Social Security in place, the average age of death was 63, and now it's 80. So it's, it's changed quite significantly. And it was never intended that Social Security was supposed to be your retirement. It was supposed to be a supplement for your retirement. Um, 
So what I have advocated is that starting at age 50, uh, or below the age of 50, um, you start very, very gradually raising the age of retirement. And it would take about 30 years to get to age 70. So that's how gradual it is. Uh, nothing 50 and above. That's too close to the age of retirement. For people under the age of 30, they have opportunity to direct where the funds are going. Uh, they don't have the ability to take it out, but over the course of the next 40 years, they're going to obviously accumulate a lot of money. Now, it brings up another very important factor, and that is because we have a $19 trillion national debt, the Fed has aberrant policies. They have to depress the interest rates because the debt service would be so high. At nearly zero interest rates for the last decade, we're still paying $250 billion a year in debt service. If we let the interest rates rise to a normal level, it would be a trillion dollars or more. So they have to keep it depressed. What's the implication? It used to be that Joe the Butcher every Friday went to the bank and put 5 to 10 percent of his check in a savings account and he watched it grow over the next 30 years, and then he was able to retire with a nice nest egg with or without Social Security. That part of the American dream is gone. No longer can do it because there's no interest to be made on the savings account. A lot of people don't even have savings accounts anymore. There's no point. Now, the same thing with the bond market, gone. So the only people who can make money are those who have risk tolerance and can put money in the stock market. Well, who are those? Upper income people. So what happens? The income gap, and it grows. Along comes Hillary and Bernie to say, it's those evil rich people, and if we just take their money, then that will solve the problem. But it's not the evil rich people, it's the evil government that keeps driving our debts up and destroying the American dream. And my follow-up on that question. The follow-up would be then, so, but you would trust that same evil government that the Supreme Court has ruled twice. Social Security is simply a tax, uh, that the check is made to the IRS, that that same uh, evil government should be the beholders and holders of retirement for all citizens over 50 years old. Is that what I'm understanding you to say? And well, then that 50-year-old should work a little longer to recover those dollars, uh, knowing the disproportion uh, eight, uh, death age of those that work at low wages and or blue collar. You have to make it impossible for anybody to take money out of the system. That's been the problem in the past. The system's been raided. If the system had never been raided, we wouldn't have this 2033 deadline that we're up against right now. But the system's going to be destroyed if we don't do something about it, and there'll be nothing for anybody. So what's going to happen to those people you just talked about is irrelevant. They will not get one penny. So we clearly have to do what is necessary to rectify the situation. Now that brings me to another point. If we fix our tax code and make it completely fair, uh, so that it once again encourages entrepreneurial risk-taking and capital investment, which are the fuels for the most powerful economic engine the world has ever known, and we get rid of the unnecessary regulations, our economy will explode. And when our economy explodes, all of these conversations become irrelevant. We may not need to do anything to Social Security in that situation, but if we continue along at the anemic pace that we are right now, with these kind of policies, we clearly have to make alterations.